Judge Kavanaugh, I'm getting ready now for this Judge, new round of questioning. I am ready. And can I say one thing? Yes. I'm just going to say, and, uh, I started my last colloquy by saying to Senator Klobuchar how much I respect her and respected what she did at the last hearing. And she asked me a question at the end that I responded by asking her a question. And I didn't, sorry, I did that. This is a tough process. I'm sorry about that. I appreciate that. I, I would like to add when you have a parent that's alcoholic, uh, you're pretty careful about drinking. And, um, and the second thing is I was truly just trying to get to the bottom of the facts and the evidence. And I, again, believe we do that by opening up the FBI investigation. And I would call it a background check instead of investigation. Thank you. Appreciate that. Senator Hatch. Well, thank you, Judge. Welcome. We're happy to have you here. Uh, my friend from, uh, uh, I'd just like to say a few words. My friend from Arizona emphasized yesterday that we have before us today two human beings, Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh. They deserve, each of you deserves to be treated fairly and respectfully. We tried to do that with Dr. Ford earlier, and I think we succeeded. It's important that we treat Judge Kavanaugh fairly now, and it remains to be seen how that's going to work out. Judge Kavanaugh has been a federal judge for 12 years, and he's been a great federal judge on the second highest court in the nation. He's earned a reputation for fairness and decency. His clerks love him. His students, he teaches in law school as well, his students love him. His colleagues love him. This man is not a monster, nor is he what has been represented here in these hearings. We're talking today about Judge Kavanaugh's conduct in high school, and even then, and as a freshman in college, I guess, as well. Serious allegations have been raised. If Judge Kavanaugh committed sexual assault, he should not serve on the Supreme Court. I think we'd all agree with that. But the circus atmosphere that has been created since my Democratic colleagues first leaked Dr. Ford's allegations to the media two weeks ago, after sitting on them for six weeks, I might add, has brought us the worst in our politics. It certainly has brought us no closer to the truth. Anonymous letters with no name and no return address are now being treated as national news. Porn star lawyers with facially implausible claims are driving the news cycle. I hate to say this, but this is worse than Robert Bork, and I didn't think it could get any worse than that. This is worse than Clarence Thomas. I didn't think it could get any worse than that. This is a national disgrace, the way you're being treated. And in the middle of it all, we have Judge Kavanaugh, a man who until two weeks ago was a uh, pillar of the legal community. There's been no whisper of misconduct by him in the time he's been a judge. What we have are uncorroborated, unsubstantiated claims from his teenage years. Claims that every alleged eyewitness has either denied or failed to corroborate. I do not mean to minimize the seriousness of the claims. Yeah, they've been serious claims, but the search for truth has to involve more than bare assertions. Like Dr. Ford, Judge Kavanaugh deserves fair treatment. He was an immature high schooler. So were we all. That he wrote or said stupid things sometimes does not make him a sexual predator. I understand the desire of my colleagues to tear down this man at any cost. I do understand it, but let's at least be fair and look at the facts or the absence thereof. Guilt by association is wrong. Immaturity does not equal criminality. That Judge Kavanaugh drank in high school or college does not make him guilty of every terrible thing that he's recently been accused of. A lifetime of respect and equal treatment ought to mean something when assessing allegations that are flatly inconsistent with the course of a person's entire adult life. With those comments, Judge, I'd just like to ask you a few questions, if I can, about how, and if you can be short in your answers, but it helped me get through a bunch of them, about how this process has unfolded. When did you first learn of Dr. Ford's allegations against you? Uh, it was a week ago Sunday when Washington Post story. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Did the ranking member raise these allegations in your one-on-one -on -one meeting with her last month? She did not. Did the ranking member raise them at your public hearing earlier this month? 
Now. Did the ranking member raise them at the closed session that followed the public hearing? She was not there. Did the ranking member or any of her colleagues raise them in the 1,300 written questions that were submitted to you following the hearing? No. When was the first time that the ranking member or her staff asked you about these allegations? Uh, today. When did you first hear of Ms. Ramirez's allegations against you? Uh, in the last, in the period since then, in the New Yorker story. Did the ranking member or any of her colleagues or any of their staffs ask you about Ms. Ramirez's allegations before they were leaked to the press? No. When was the first time that the ranking member or any of her colleagues or any of their staff asked you about Ms. Ramirez's allegations? Today. I think it's a disgrace between Senator Coons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Judge Kavanaugh, um, today's hearing is about Dr. Ford's uh, serious allegations about uh, sexual assault. Uh, you have unequivocally uh, denied those claims, um, but we're here today to assess um, her credibility and yours. Uh, and in our uh, previous vigorous exchanges and the uh, previous confirmation hearing rounds, uh, I, I found that your answers um, at times vigorously defended, but at other times struck me as evasive or not credible on key issues. And it's against that backdrop that I'm seeking to assess your credibility today. Um, you said in your opening that rule of law means taking allegations seriously, um, and I agree with that. It brings me no joy to question you on these topics today, but I do think they're serious, and I think they are worthy of our attention. Um, so let me, if I can, uh, return to a line of questioning uh, my colleague was on before, um, which was about whether you've ever gotten aggressive while drinking or forgotten an evening um, after drinking. Those are two different questions. Uh, I've already answered the second one as the first. Uh, I think the answer to that is basically no. I don't know really what you mean by that. Like, wh what are you talking about? Well, uh, the, the I reason I, I, mean, I don't mean it that way, but uh, no is the basic answer, unless you're talking about something where that I'm not aware of that you're going to ask about. The, the reason I'm asking, um, we've had a very brief period of time to weigh outside evidence, and uh, I'll join my colleagues in saying, uh, I wish we had more evidence in front of us today to weigh. Um, do you remember Liz Swisher, a college classmate of yours from Yale? Uh, first on their point about the outside evidence, uh, you know, all four witnesses well, let, said... Let me focus. I'm trying to get this question. I know, but you made, a, you made a point. I just want to emphasize all four witnesses who are allegedly at the event have said it didn't happen, including... Dr. Ford's longtime friend, Ms. Kaiser, right. who said if she's Mark Judge, If Mark Judge were in front of us today to question, we'd be able to assess his credibility. But Let me just get through this through, if I can, Your Honor. He, uh, Liz Swisher is a college classmate. She's now a medical doctor. Um, and I'm quoting uh, from a recent interview she gave. Um, she said um, Brett Kavanaugh um, drank more than a lot of people. He'd end up slurring his words, stumbling. It's not credible for him to say he's had no memory lapses in the nights he drank to excess. I know because I drank with him. Um, how should we assess that? She then goes her? on, if you, if you kept reading, and says she actually can't point to any specific instance like that. Um, the quote that jumped out at me was, Brett was a sloppy drunk, and I know because I drank with him. Um, there's also I don't think that, I, don't, I, I do not think that's a fair characterization. Um, and Chris Dudley's quoted in that article, and I would refer you to what Chris Dudley said. I spent more time with Chris Dudley in college than just about anyone, and I'd refer you to what he said. In other reporting, as I'm sure you know, a college classmate described you as relatively shy, but said that when you drank, you could be aggressive or even belligerent, and your roommate, as I think you discussed with Senator Klobuchar, said yeah. you were frequently drunk. Yeah, or, and, that, and that roommate, that was freshman year roommate. Yes. And there was contention between him and the third person. There were three of us in a small room. And you should look at what I said in the redacted portion of the, tr of the transcript about him. And you should assess his credibility with that in mind. Um, put yourself in our shoes for a moment, if you would, Judge. And I know that's asking a lot of you in this setting. Um, but suppose you'd gone through a process um, to select someone for an incredibly important job in a position. You had a lot of qualified candidates. And as you're finishing the hiring process, 
you learn of a credible allegation that, if true, would be disqualifying. Um, wouldn't you either take a step back and conduct a thorough investigation um, or move to a different candidate? And why not agree to a one-week pause to allow the FBI to investigate all these allegations and allow you an opportunity a week from now to have the folks present in front of us for us to assess their credibility and for us to either clear your name or resolve these allegations by moving to a different nominee. All four witnesses who are alleged to be at the event said it didn't happen, including oh. Dr. Ford's longtime friend, Ms. Kaiser, who said that she didn't know me and that she does not recall ever being at a party with me with or without Dr. Ford. What I've struggled with, Judge Kavanaugh, is the absence of a fair federal law enforcement driven nonpartisan process to question the various people who I think are critical to this. My concern, should you move forward, is what it will do um, to the credibility of the court uh, and how that may well hang over um, your service. I understand Look, your concern Senator, yeah, about this. Senator, my, my I wish you would join us in calling for an FBI investigation for one week you, when to you clear or confirm some of these when, allegations. When you say a week delay, do you know how long the last 10 days have been for yeah, us? Probably an eternity. But yeah. in the Judge Thomas confirmation, yeah, for us, hearing, every day, it's a four day delay. Every day, it's been a lifetime. And, and you know, yeah, and, and it's been investigated. And all four witnesses say it didn't happen. And they've said it under penalty of felony. And I've produced my calendars, which show. Uh, you know, a lot of, that's a very, that's important evidence. And you act like, I mean, every, ten, the last 10 days, I asked for a hearing the day after the allegation. Uh, before I call on Senator Lee, I want to emphasize something here that uh, talking about doing something without enough time. We had 45 days between July 30th and September the 13th, I believe it is, when we could have been investigating this. And in regard to this candidate, if you take the average of 65 to 70 days between the time that, that a person is announced by the president and the Senate votes on it, is about 65 to 70 days. And here we are at about 85 to 90 days. So there's plenty of time put in on this nomination. Senator Lee. Oh, no, wait a minute. I got one other thing I want to do. <laughs> Everybody else has been putting letters in the, in the record. I have a letter here from 65 women who knew Judge Kavanaugh between the years 79 and 83, the years he attended Georgetown Prep High School. These women wrote to the committee because they know Judge Kavanaugh and they know that the allegations raised by Dr. Ford are completely, totally inconsistent with his character. These 65 women know him through social events and church. Many have remained close friends with him. Here's what they say, uh, partly quoting the letter. Quote, through the more than 35 years we've known him, Brett has stood out for his friendship, character, and integrity. He has always treated women with decency and respect. That was true in high school and it remains true to this day. In closing, they wrote, Judge Kavanaugh, quote, has always been a good person. So without objection, I put it in the record, Senator Lee. Judge Kavanaugh, you've been cooperative at every stage of this investigation, both your background investigation and the investigation conducted by this committee. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. It's also correct that you yourself do not control the FBI or when it conducts an investigation. You were a nominee. You're not tasked with the job of deciding who, when, whether, or how conducts an investigation. That, that's correct. But at every moment when either we or, or, or prior to the committee taking jurisdiction over it, the FBI has asked you questions, you've been attentive and you've been responsive. Isn't that right? That's correct. Throughout my career. I have colleagues today who have repeatedly asked for an FBI investigation. And there are some ironies in this, ironies that, that uh, ascend at least two levels. In the first place, at least one of my colleagues, at least one of them, had access to this information many, many weeks before anyone else did, had the ability, and I believe the moral duty and obligation, to report those facts to the FBI, at which point they could have and would have been investigated by the FBI. 
And that could have been handled in such a way that didn't turn this into a circus, one that has turned your life upside down and that of your family and the life of Dr. Ford and her family upside down. I consider this most unfortunate, given that this was entirely within the control of at least one of my Democratic colleagues to do this. The second level of irony here is that while calling repeatedly for an investigation by the FBI, an investigation over which you have no ability to control, by the way, an investigation you have no authority to call for, while calling for an investigation, we're in the middle of a conversation that involves questions to you. And so I ask my Democratic colleagues, if you have questions for Judge Kavanaugh, ask him. He's right here. If that's really what you want is the truth, ask him questions right now. If you have questions of other witnesses, then for the love of all that is sacred and holy, participate in the committee investigations that have been going on as you have not been participating with the committee staff investigating the outside witnesses. If someone really were interested in the truth, this is what they would do. They would participate in the investigation and when we have a committee investigation, a committee hearing with live witnesses, they would talk about that rather than something else they wish they were having in front of them. If what they want is a search for the truth, then now is their choice. If, on the other hand, what they want to do is delay this until after the election, which at least one of my colleagues on the Democratic side has acknowledged, then that might be what they would do. Finally, I want to point out that there is significant precedent from our former chairman of this committee, Chairman Joe Biden. During the Clarence Thomas hearings nearly three decades ago, Chairman Biden made some interesting observations about FBI reports and their role in this process. Here's what he said, quote, the next person who refers to an FBI report as being worth anything obviously doesn't understand anything. The FBI explicitly does not, in this or any other case, reach a conclusion, period, period. Those are his dual periods, not mine. I continue the quote. The reason why we cannot rely on the FBI report, you would not like it if we did, because it is inconclusive. So when people wave an FBI report before you, understand they do not. They do not. They do not reach conclusions. They do not make, as my friend points out more accurately, they do not make recommendations. In other words, the role of the FBI is to flag issues. Those issues have been flagged. Sadly, in this case, they were flagged not as they should have been, not in the timing in which they should have been. And therefore, they couldn't have been addressed in, in the manner that would have preserved a lot more dignity for you, for your family, and for Dr. Ford and her family. They were instead held out until the final moment. I consider that most unfortunate. And for that, on behalf of this committee, I extend to you my most profound sympathies. And my most profound sympathies to Dr. Ford and her family as well. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, since we don't have enough slots for everyone, can I have the last minute of Senator Lee so that Senator Kennedy can be recognized? Judge, um, we did 38 hours in public with you. Did we have any private hearings with you? Uh, yes. Uh, was that a fun time for you when people and senators could ask questions that are awkward or uncomfortable about potential alcoholism, potential gambling addiction, credit card debt, uh, if your buddies floated you money to buy baseball tickets. Did you enjoy that time we spent in here late one night? Uh, I'm ha always happy to cooperate with the committee. <laughs> That's charitable. Um, were you ever asked about any sexual allegations when we had that time in here with you alone? No. Did the ranking member already have these allegations for, I guess this would have been September 6 or 7? And the letter was written on July 30th. A, uh, a recommendation was made by the ranking member or her staff to uh, Dr. Ford. And by the way, I think Dr. Ford is a victim. And I think she's been through hell. And I'm very sympathetic to her. Um, but did the ranking member's staff, did we hear today, make a recommendation to hire a lawyer and she knew all of that? And yet we had a hearing here with you and none of these things were asked. But then once the process was closed, once the FBI investigation was closed, once we were done meeting in public and in private, then this was sprung on you. I just want to make sure I have the, the dates correct, right? Because we got 35 plus days from all the time that this evidence was in the hands. Recommendations were made to an outside lawyer. You could have handled all this. We could have had this conversation in private in a way that didn't not only do crap to his family, but do all... I yield my time. 
Thank trying you. to see if he could do math about 35 days. That was a little bit of a question. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, as a federal judge, you're aware of the jury instruction, falsus in, in unibus, falsus in omnibus. Are you not? You're aware of that jury instruction? Yeah, I, I am. You know what it means? It, you can translate it for me, Senator. You can do it better than I can. False in one thing, false in everything, meaning in jury instructions that we, some of us as prosecutors, have heard many times, is told a jury that they can disbelieve a witness if they find him to be false in one thing. So the core of why we're here today really is credibility. Uh, it, let me talk. The core of why we're here is an allegation for which the four witnesses present have all said it didn't happen. Let me ask you about Renata Dolphin, who lives in Connecticut. She thought these yearbook statements were, quote, horrible, hurtful, and simply untrue, end quote, because Renata alumni clearly implied some boast of sexual conquest. And that's the reason that you apologize to her, correct? Uh, that's false, speaking uh, about the, the yearbook. And she, she said she and I never had any sexual interaction. So your, right. question, your question is false. And I've uh, addressed that in the opening statement. And so your question is based on a false premise and really does great harm to her. I don't know why you're bringing this up, frankly. Doing great harm to her by even bringing her name up here is really unfortunate. Well, calling someone an alumnus in that way. Well, implying what you're implying about by a number of your football friends at the time as boasting of sexual conflict. Uh, the, That's the reason that I'm bringing it up. And yeah, no, it's like, false. You're implying with, that. Look what you're bringing up right now about her. Look what you're Mr. doing. Chairman, I ask that Don't these interruptions not up. be subtracted from my time. Yeah, ask your question and then let She's a great person. She's always been a great person. We never had any sexual interaction. By bringing this up, you're just just dragging her through the mud. It's just unnecessary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you made reference, Judge, to a sworn statement, I believe, by Mark Judge to the committee. Is that correct? I made reference to what Mark Judge's uh, lawyer sent to the committee. Yeah, it's not a sworn statement, is it? Or, uh, under penalty of felony? Well, it's a statement signed by his lawyer, Barbara Van Gelder. It is six cursory and conclusory sentences. Are you saying that that is a substitute for an investigation by the FBI or some interview by the FBI under oath? Under penalty of felony, he said that this kind of event didn't happen and that I never did or would have done something like that. As a and federal judge, you always want the best evidence, don't you? Senator, he has said, and all the witnesses present, look at Ms. Kaiser's statement. She's, she's Dr. Let me, let me move on to another topic. You've testified to this committee this morning, to this afternoon, Quote, this whole two-week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit fueled with apparent pent-up anger about President Trump and the 2016 election, fear that has been unfairly stoked about my judicial record, revenge on behalf of the Clintons, and millions of dollars in money from outside left-wing opposition groups. Is it your testimony that the motivation of the courageous woman who sat where you did just a short time ago was revenge on behalf of a left-wing conspiracy or the Clintons? Senator, I said in my opening statement that she preferred confidentiality. And her confidentiality was, was destroyed by the actions of this committee. Let me ask you this. In a speech that you gave at Yale, you, you described, quote, falling out of the bus 
onto the front steps of the Yale Law School at 4.45 a.m. I wasn't, and I wasn't then describing me. I organized, to, Senator, Senator, let me finish here, please. I organized a uh, third year end of school party for 30 of my classmates to rent a bus to go to Fenway Park in Boston, which is about a three hour trip. I bought all the tickets. You and I have discussed that before. Uh, I bought all the baseball tickets. I rented the bus. I organized the whole trip. We went to Fenway Park. Roger Pitt Clemens was pitching for the Red Sox. We had a great time. George Brett was playing third base for the Royals. Actually, he was playing left field that night. And he and we went to the game and got back, and then we went out. It was a great night of friendship. I, I apologize for interrupting, Judge, but I need to finish the quote before I ask you the question. I wasn't the talking about ends. Me. Okay, well, the uh, quote ends that you tried to, quote, piece things back together, end quote, to recall what happened that night. Meaning, I know what happened. Well, you, uh, Judge, let it. Let, uh, will you quickly answer your question, then I'm going to let him answer. I know what I know what happened that I'll night. I'll finish asking my question. So Please go ahead, but do it quickly. Doesn't that imply to you that you had to piece things back together? You had to ask others what happened that night. No. It, okay, you you take your time now and answer the question. Yeah. Then Senator Craig. Uh, definitely not. I know exactly what happened that night. It was a great night of fun. I was so happy that it was great camaraderie. Everyone looks back fondly on the trip to Fenway Park. And then we went out together, a group of classmates, and I know exactly what happened the whole night. And I'm happy. Judge, do you, be do you believe Anita Hill? Senator, Senator Crapo. Uh, Senator Crapo. Senator Crapo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Judge Kavanaugh, uh, first, I want to get into this whole question that's been bandied back and forth here almost endlessly today about uh, the FBI investigation process. Um, because I think it's, I, I want to follow up a little bit on what Senator Lee and Senator Sass have referenced. Um, there's been a lot of talk here about we need an FBI investigation. Uh, in these processes, which you've been through a number of times now, when the FBI does a background check with regard to a nomination, uh, c could you quickly describe that for us? What does the FBI do? Um, the FBI gathers statements from people who have information. They don't resolve credibility. They gather the information, and the credibility determination is made by the ultimate fact finder, which in this case is the United States Senate. The committee, of course, here has gathered uh, evidence. And the FBI then gives that uh, report to the White House, if I understand it, and the White House then transfers it to the Senate. Is that the case? That's my understanding, yes. And as you indicated, it does not do, and it's been said many times here today, the FBI does not make judgments. It gives the Senate committee information. At that point in time, uh, if I understand the process correctly, the Senate, the United States Senate Judiciary Committee has legal authorities. If it receives information in an FBI report that it wants to further investigate, the Senate has legal authority to conduct further investigation. Is that correct? That's my understanding. And that is what has been referenced here many times about how some of these witnesses that were identified in the very late information that we received have made statements that are under penalty of felony. That's a felony for lying to the Senate Judiciary Committee. And as I understand it, what happens is the Senate Judiciary Committee, which has authority under law to conduct those kinds of investigations, follows up on the FBI reports to finish out the investigation that it wants with regard to any information that it receives that needs further investigation. Is that your understanding of the process? That's my understanding, Senator. Now, in this case, there's been a lot of talk here today, and if I have time, I'll get into it. It looks like I'll run out of time. But in this case, there's a lot of concern by many that there was not so much an interest in an FBI investigation as there was in delay. I'm not going to get to that unless I have time. I want to talk about what happened in the Senate committee's investigation. Because as I understand it, and this may be more of a question to the chairman, as soon as we received information, which was about 45 days after others on the committee received it, we conducted an investigation. Is that correct, Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry to turn the question to you, but we began that legal Senate Judiciary Committee investigation. Yes. And that investigation involved our fully, lawfully 
uh, enabled investigators to conduct an investigation. And if I understand it correctly, the Democratic members of the committee refused to participate in that investigation. Yes. And so we have conducted the investigation. The very kinds of things that my colleagues on the other side are asking that we tell the FBI to do, this committee has the authority to do it, and this committee does it, and this committee has done it. Now, there may be more demands for more interviews and more investigation, but when you, Judge Kavanaugh, have referenced the testimony that has come from those who were supposed, who were identified as, as being at this event, um, the testimony that has been received from them is information that has been received pursuant to a Senate committee investigation. And I just think it should be made clear. I think there's been a lot of back and forth here about, oh, we're not getting information, we're not looking at this, you don't want to look into the investigation, you don't want to see what happened. The reality is that this committee immediately and thoroughly investigated every witness that has been identified to us, and we have statements under penalty of felony from them. Um, so I just want to conclude with that. i got 45 seconds left, so I'm going to just ask you one quick question, again on timing. Uh, you had a meeting with Senator Feinstein on August 20th? That's my understanding. Yeah, well, I had a meeting, and that's my understanding of the date. Of the date, yes. What was established earlier in testimony here today was that um, the ranking member's staff uh, helped to helped uh, Dr. Ford to retain the Katz Law Firm on uh, sometime between August or July 30th and August 7th. So I just wanted you to clarify one more time. In the meeting that you had two weeks or more later, this issue was not raised with you. The issue was not raised. All right. Thank you. My time is up. We'll take a five-minute break now.